Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be creating some flowers from white die cuts and inking them with some Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated inks to get all of the layers. So instead of die cutting from separate pieces of different colors of cardstock to achieve this result, we're actually going to die cut everything from white and then ink it up with inks. You could also use markers to shade this if you would rather. It's just another way to achieve that fantastic layering look. We're going to start by building our background and I am going to add this green background for my flowers. I think it's really going to help make the pinks I'm going to use for the Altenew African Daisy. This is a craft a flower where you build all of the different components with different layers. I think it's going to set off the pinks beautifully. Now I decided to go ahead and ink up my background with this Geo Leaves stencil from Simon Says Stamp and I thought I would ink first with the leaves and then add some ink blending over the top. I want my background to all be green but I want it to still have some subtle pattern to it. I think ultimately I would have rather maybe inked the background and then done my stenciling. Either way will work, but you're going to see me build it this way. It's very easy to realign with the stencil. That is the fantastic thing about stencils and keep adding. So I started with some sprout ink and then I very, very lightly applied the ink that was left over on my blending brush over the top of this to give that top of my panel that nice light color. Now I'm using some fairway ink. That's the mid-tone color in this trio of inks. Again, I'm going to peel this up and I think I'll go ahead and add the fairway. And I realized about this point, I don't think the leftover ink on my blending brush is going to give me quite as much ink as I would like. So I'm going to re-ink my blending brush and we're going to use a little heavier hand over the top of this. I leave all of this in the video just to show you how you keep working with whatever you're working on or keep working with it, keep playing with the inks and things like that. Oftentimes you can achieve the look you want if you don't get it right the first time. I think it's important to share like the trials and, you know, trial and error, I guess I should say, of creating. There is that in everything that you do. I'm very rarely do I just hit something the first time or all parts of it the first time. And that goes for several things in this card. Even though the end result seems pretty straightforward and quick and easy, I played around with lots of different ideas before kind of settling on what I decided to do here today. And Often I try not to redo things, so I will try to find ways to make it work with what I have. I added some field ink down along the bottom, which is going to be much deeper and darker, and now I'm going to add more of that color down along the bottom edge. When the inks are fresh and new, it's going to be a little bit more sharp, I guess I want to say. As the ink dries and is absorbed into the cardstock, it's going to flatten out, smooth out, and be a little bit more subtle, which is what I'm going for in the finished card design. I'm going to go ahead and splatter my background with a little white gouache. If you haven't checked out my quick tip video on gouache and why I have been using this as opposed to white paint, definitely check that out. I will link that uh, either at the end or down below in the description. It is going to stay more white than paint. Paint has a tendency to absorb into the cardstock and maybe pick up some of the color in the background, especially if you've inked the background as opposed to a solid cardstock color, where gouache is going to sit on top of that a little bit more and retain the white. I want my splatter to be nice and white. I didn't even add any new gouache to my uh, little clear bucket. I actually just reactivated it with a little squirt of water and I used my paintbrush that got a good bath after this. This is the African Daisy set. As I mentioned, I'm die cutting my layers from white cardstock and I'm going to ink them with a trio of ink from Simon Says Stamp. This is the pink trio, which is going to be Carnation, which you're seeing here, Peony, the mid-tone color, and Rose. We're going to do this for all of the pieces. 
One of the things I love about Altenew in their packaging is they show you how to assemble each of these. So you're not left wondering, you know, which layer is which. It shows you exactly how to assemble them, whether you've die cut them from different colors of cardstock, whether you've die cut them from white and you're coloring them with markers or inks like I'm doing here. However you end up doing that, it makes it super easy to assemble. Once I have layered these three pieces, there's three for pieces for each of the large African daisies and I think five for the little teeny tiny bud. Um, you are gonna see how easy these come together. And you also notice that the different colors. Again, the ink will smooth out a little bit as it dries. And I've only applied glue in the center of the daisy so that I can curl the leaves up just a little bit to get a little bit more movement. There are three pieces a piece for the larger open African daisies. And for me, that felt like quite a lot. Uh, I'm only gonna use two each. You can do whatever you wanna do um, there. They're just super teeny tiny dies. And I decided I didn't need to add all three. Maybe if I was die cutting them from multiple colors of cardstock, I would change my mind on that. Again, personal preference, it's your project. You do whatever you want to do there. I've got my leaves and my stems from this set. Uh, the middle of my flower I'm inking up with mocha and sunbeam. Those are the two colors I picked for this. So it's gonna add a nice little yellow pop of color in the center of my pink African daisies. And then for the stems, we are going to use the same fairway and field inks that we used previously for the background. So it's going to definitely blend in a little bit, which is kind of what I'm going for, but I will show you how I add definition to the leaves with a Copic marker after I've ink blended those. I'm gonna use my tweezers to help clamp the center of my daisy in place while the glue is drying and go ahead and apply some ink to these pieces. I am using some Simon Says Stamp grid paper underneath here. This is a tear off paper pad. It's nice and large. I like to use it a lot if I'm coloring um, and I don't wanna get the marker or ink on my work surface. I usually use the Altenew uh, self-healing craft mat or the Tim Holtz glass mat, either one. I can just simply tear this off and throw it away. I switch back and forth with what I like to do here but I've been using this quite a bit lately and it has been working out fantastic. So I guess I used a little sprout too for the tips of the leaves. This is definitely gonna help adding a little lighter ink to the, because the leaves are gonna be in the bottom part of our Geo Leaves background panel, which is more of the fairway and field. So a little sprout will add um, a nice little light pop to the leaves. Now there is a little line that is scored when you die cut these down the center. I'm actually gonna fold the leaves a little bit on that score line to give, again, a little movement to the leaves. It's gonna give a little di dimension and really add a tiny bit of interest. I'm not gonna pop them up with foam adhesive or anything like that. Just bend them a tiny bit and it does help, I think, give them a little bit more uh, dimension. Once I have my leaves and stems all colored, just bend those like so. And you can see they're very much the same color since I didn't pick a different color. But once we add the, fl the flowers to the card, I really think that they're going to show up nicely. You could always do a different color if you want. For me, this is the look I was going for here. And I think I'm going to like this. I'm gonna lay out my leaves and kind of just play around, see if I like this. And then we will grab the rest of the layering pieces for our flowers. I've glued down all of the leaves and stems now and I'm gonna go ahead and glue down this first flower. I'm doing this in steps so that the glue dries and hopefully nothing moves. And then this is G28 Copic marker and I'm gonna just go along that score line down the center of the leaves and then I'm gonna just very, very lightly feather out from that center line 
with my marker to give a little veining and a little bit more interest to those leaves to help add that or help give added dimension and really make them show up against the background. You could always take a marker and do this to the flowers if you wanted to as well. Um, to be completely honest, I was afraid I would mess up my flowers and I had already tried a couple of other things that I didn't like. And so I decided to leave my flower as is because I really, really loved that pop of pink. Next, I've got my pieces for the next open daisy and then more of the bud. And I'm going to take my pieces. I'm going to lay out anything that's going to be colored with my lightest carnation color first for both flowers. Let's go ahead and do that at the same time. I'm just going to kind of clean off the tip of my blending brush and then I am using a very light hand just like I did with the first flower because I want that dimension. I want you to be able to really tell the difference between the three colors of pink ink I'm using here. And next we've got some peony. Let's find our pieces here. I am referencing, I know it's off to the side. I've zoomed in so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, off to the side, I do have the packaging for the African Daisy. So it really kind of helps show me which pieces kind of are intended to be the same color. And I use that as a guide. And I really kind of used a little bit heavier hand than I had intended for this layer, but that is okay. It's going to work out fine. Something I've really been working on is embracing imperfection a little bit more and not worrying so much about little things because generally it works out in the end. Finally, I finished with rose on my final layer and let's assemble our final flowers. We're gonna add the mid layer so, so pretty, you guys. I love these layering dies from Altenu in their Craft a Flower collection. Probably no surprise, you guys know how much I love die cutting and uh, just brilliant, so amazing. All right, I'm gonna leave that clamped. I thought I had my flower centers inked, I think I was looking for them, but I think I haven't inked them yet. We're going to assemble the little bud. And this has five pieces. So it definitely is a little bit more, I guess, entailed, but it does go together. It's super, super easy. And I'm going to switch my clamp to my other flower. And you'll notice as I'm working, I'm pulling those leaves a little bit towards me to give them that little bit of dimension. Even with the bud, I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue. I was adding the glue just down at the bottom, which leaves the petals loose. All right. So I need to add the flower center, but I can go ahead and add my bud to my card and I can clamp that down to my card with my tweezers. I love this. I feel like it's a clamp like you would use if you were doing, let's say a woodworking project or something and you needed to clamp some glued things together. Um, that's how I think about my reverse craft tweezers because I use them every time I craft. And almost every time I craft, I use them to clamp something down in place so it stays put. Let's get these pieces for our second daisy because it really needs that center to look complete. Now, there isn't a, I guess, open spot, I want to say, for my greeting. But I really felt as I was creating this that the stems and how, how tall the flowers are and how long the stems are is gonna provide me with a nice open spot where I can layer sentiments right over top of the stems on my card. And I think that kind of helps make them part of the design. 
I stamped You Are Amazing and Hello from the Belladonna Lily stamp layering set. This was a new set that was released last week from Altenew. It's one of my favorites. I love the hello greetings in it because you can mix the hello with so many different sentiments. And so I went ahead and just used it again here. I die cut my greetings uh, using the sentiment labels dies from Simon Says Stamp. I die cut my greeting or pardon me, stamped my greetings on white cardstock using VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And then I'm going to pop them up with some Waffle Flower Foam Adhesive Strips. These are my favorite strips at the moment. I absolutely love them. There's two different widths. So I'm using the little bit thicker uh, foam adhesive, but there is one that's a little, a little more flat still adds dimension but isn't quite as tall. Neither one of them are what I would call exceptionally like super thick foam adhesive, which I personally like. I just want it to have a little dimension um, and this fits the bill. I'm just going to go ahead and peel off my backing paper. I recommend that Spellbinders Tool-in-One for helping peel off the backing paper. It is awesome. And then if you have been here before, you guys already know what we're gonna do next because I can hardly create a card that doesn't have a little heart on it somewhere. These are the Hint of Mint Hearts from Trinity Stamps. Let's grab my favorite Simon Says Stamp triangle tray and pick up the pieces with my embellishment wand. Yes, I finally got a new tip for my embellishment wand. If you guys have uh, heard my troubles with that, my dog actually pulled the tip of the embellishment wand off, I dropped it on the floor and hadn't noticed, and he thought that it meant that was for him. Luckily, I saved him from swallowing it, uh, but he did mangle the tip of that embellishment wand, so I had to replace it. After I have my little hearts in place, I'm going to place this entire panel on a white top fold card base, add some Hero Arts Crystal Lacquer to the center of my African daisies, and then something that I have said that I'm going to be working on doing more often is adding a coordinating envelope. This is literally one of the simplest uh, coordinating envelopes I've done, but I love it. We are simply going to take Sprout, uh, fairway and field inks and we're not going to ink the entire white envelope like I did with the card base but we are going to stencil that geo leaves design and what happens is we end up with a beautiful coordinating envelope that kind of naturally leaves a great space for you to write out the address on it is so simple so easy and I love 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 the finished result and there is our set I hope you guys have enjoyed this video showing how to create a layered flower design with white die cuts and some of your favorite inks. The supplies I use to create my card and envelope are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. I'd love to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to see you over there. My top tier patrons get an exclusive live each month and uh, some other fun perks. And I do send out birthday cards to all my Patreon members. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel click that like button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.